All right, so welcome everyone. As Matt said, my name is Raheem Raoufi, and uh, with Daryl Wan, we're going to be presenting a few of the multicast uh, features here. First one being, of course, filtering unknown multicasts. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and start with our agenda. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with a quick overview first, right, and take a look at the use cases and then jump into the details and caveats and look at the configuration. And then from there, the troubleshooting and Daryl will do the demo for us. And then also additional resources you can look into. <clears throat> so with overview, what are we trying to um, <clears throat> uh, what, what are we trying to address in this scenario with uh, unknown um, multicast, right? So first thing first, the issue is that the initial flooding of an unknown multicast within the same VLAN, right? When we have source and sources or source and receivers on the same VLAN, we run into this issue of, uh, of course, unknown multicast being flooded, the initial phase, right? When the multicast stream starts. So this behavior, uh, of course, unknown multicast traffic will be flooded until IP multicast flow programming is done on the hardware, right? So this is what is called the initial flooding of unknown multicast. And you may say, okay, fine, is this initial? How does it really, does it impact? How big of an impact does it have? We'll, we'll take a look at this, right? First thing, we're going to go ahead and, of course, address some of the, just kind of build a little bit of an overview and a background for it and then slowly get into the details of it, right? So then to avoid this initial flooding, our basically the filtering of unknown multicast kicks in, this command or this feature, if you may. Now, but with this command, we do not impact, right? The It basically applies to all multicasts except for the reserve multicast, such as our OSPF, VRRP, PIM, basically anything that starts with 224.0.0.0 all the way to 224.0.0255, right? And 224.0.1.0 and 224.0.1255, the range, right? Basically the administrative range with TTL of one. Usually these uh, multicasts have TTL of one within the same LAN. Um, these will not be um, affected with this uh, filter. Right, because we need them to uh, for our operations, for our management protocols. And then, of course, with IPv6, as you see the range here, the FF0X, colon zero, colon zero, all the way to FF0X, FFFF, right? So anything that starts with FF with IPv6, that's multicast reserve range. <clears throat> Now, so supported platforms, right? The 6200 series, the 6300 series, the 64 and 8360. These are the support platforms with use cases. Now, I'd like to bring your attention here, basically. Here's a use case that this is an actual live production. And this is what we were seeing in our customer uh, um, site, right? A, that glitch, basically, you have a wall of screens, right? And all these, uh, of course, streams are uh, occurring. And if you can't, and please take a look at right here, because um, I, they, as they say, right, uh, a picture is um, better than a thousand words, right? So here is the actual problem right here. You, your attention right about here. You see the glitch, right? That hiccup, if you may, or that glitch. Basically, it's all about the uh, uh, user experience and the customers that are watching that. Imagine if you are in a uh, sport event and right there in the boxing event, the knockout punch, right close to the knockout punch, you have that glitch. Talk about ruining the whole experience, right? So that is the issue that we need to resolve because what happens, you have multiple sources and these receivers on the same VLAN. Now, in this case, let's just say, for example, you have a set up, set up box, right? that is already receiving eight megs of stream of data coming in, right? It's a giggy port. It's receiving eight, uh, 800, megs of, 800 megs of data already. And then the next stream starts. Let's just say if it's a 400 megs, well, when that initial flooding starts, it does interrupt. Although this, this receiver did not want to receive anything from those sources, right? 
was not participating in that multicast group. So, but it was interrupted, right? So <clears throat> now that is our use case that we're trying to deal with. And these are some of the caveats. This is not a caveat, but we just wanted to reinforce that this is applicable on the same VLAN when the sources and receivers are on the same VLAN. Just wanted to reinforce that, right? Configuration. Now with IP, uh, the new command we're looking at for IPv4, IP IGMP snooping filter unknown MCAS with IPv6, IPv6 MLD snooping filter unknown MCAS, right? And the verification command show interface statistic human readable non-zero. So we'll take a look at some of this, right? And uh, what are some other ways to verify this, right? You can always basically do packet captures. So here's an example within the same VLAN again, right? We have multiple sources. And so just given that these VLAN 2001, you have IGMP snooping enabled for IPv4 and IPv6. Those are our older commands, nothing fancy there. But in the global configuration, IP IGMP snooping filter unknown MCAS and IPv4, IPv6 MLD snooping filter unknown MCAS, right? So the initial plotting of the unknown multicast traffic is filtered for both IPv4 and IPv6, right? For this VLAN 2001, okay? Once we enable this, okay? So again, please note unknown um, multicast traffic equals when the multicast group does not have an IGMP join. So the receiver is not participating, but yet it is receiving and it is interrupting its operations. Feature configuration comparison, right? So this is just for your reference. So you can have, a, a, if you're dealing with our Aruba OS 8 or our Calmware, for example, although we're dealing with AOS CX feature. So we have the AOS CX feature, as we spoke about, IGM, IP IGMP snooping filter unknown MCAS for IPv4. Equivalent to that, you're looking in our AOS S, um, some of the commands for your reference, right? IP IGMP filter unknown MCAS, very much similar to what we have, almost, but syntax wise. And then Calmware, VLAN 2001, and IGMP snooping has been enabled, IGMP snooping drop unknown. So similar kind of. <clears throat> troubleshooting. So some of the key thing, well, first thing first with troubleshooting, again, take care of some of the physical stuff, right? As far as being the physical cables, make sure the physical connectivity exists within the LAN, well, of course, within the network itself by doing your pings and trace and so on, right? And we'll take a look at that, of course, um, for verification, step number one, how do we verify? The show interface statistics, human readable non-zero command, you can actually see the flooding when the initial flooding starts, you can see the statistics packet numbers are gonna increase on that interface counts, right? Um, another way is again, verify by monitoring or packet captures. That's it, right? As far as uh, capturing those um, initial flooding. So here's an example of when we don't have this feature enabled, please note the feature is disabled and we have a source port one slash one slash two. So this is our source port and it starts basically uh, on the switch. We start receiving from the source, right? And then the receiver ports are one slash one slash one, one slash one slash 12. And you can see that we're transmitting out to these receivers, although they're not participating in this multicast, about 1,000 packets or so have been sent to them. Now, if this was a heavy stream of data going and they're already receiving and participating in another multicast group, this would definitely, you would see those uh, glitches in the stream, right? So then here we are, right? The, uh, this is basically below, we can see the feature being enabled, the IP IGMP snooping filter on no multi MCAS. Again, the source port, one slash one slash two, right? And we can see the receive. So on the switch port, we're receiving, right? And then on the receiver ports, you notice the packet dramatically, right? It's only two packet versus 1000 packet. That's a definitely difference here. We can see. 
So that's one way to verify. Another way is, of course, by doing your mirror session, destination CPU. In this case, hopefully it's not your production peak hours and so on. Let's take the right precaution. Or you can do just packet captures, right? This is an example for you. Um, so source interface, right? We want to do the transmit, receive, and enable this mirror session. And then you can see, basically, as far as when the source starts streaming the uh, multicast stream, you can see the source and the destination, 232, 10.10.10, .10 right, UDP port. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to hand over um, to Daryl for demonstration. He's going to go through the topology with you guys and then also additional resources. Daryl, to you. Sure. All right, so this is my demo topology. I have a switch here in the middle, A360, a multicast source that's streaming out. I also have ports they're not connected to interested receivers, right? So if you want to filter them to these ports, this traffic, you can enable this command, right? Globally, as well as the snoopings at the VLAN level. And then they will not receive the initial traffic. So I'm going to show you a before and after. I'm going to show you the traffic stream first, being sent, and they will get the initial stream, the initial flood. Then after that, on enable this feature, so you can see that that filtering is enabled. They do not receive it because they are not interested. Okay, so let me just show you the config on the switch. Our VLAN is here. They're interested in right now. IGMP stoop is enabled. Go further down. You can see the mirror monitoring the ports, but that filtering command is not enabled right now. Let's do a packet capture. Let's start the stream. Stream it. streaming if you look at the packet capture you can see start the capture the initial so this is the unicast source sent to the multicast address so this initial flooding is seen even though those ports do not have any interested receivers okay. and after that it stopped because of igmp snooping if you did not enable igmp snooping we'll just keep flooding Okay, so let me stop this now. And now we can enable that command on the switch. Let's start the capture as well. Again. Start the stream. We should not see the initial flooding anymore. Okay, going on, Let's look at the capture. You can stop it now. Let's review. So we don't see the flooding anymore for the new capture compared to the previous one. We did not enable the feature. So this was the initial flooding scene. All ports would get it. So that's the feature. Let me go back. And some additional resources that you can read through that are related to this feature. 